Hi class. Today we're going to cover the history and the current state of the accounting profession. We start with the big four, which is what we hear about today. These are the big four accounting firms, the largest ones in the world. I would note that uh, when I was on your side of the desk, they were called the big eight because there were eight very large uh, accounting firms. And um, there was a great deal of consolidation that occurred through, uh, through the years. Arthur Anderson, of course, went away after Enron closed. They, they had to close their doors. Ernst and Ernst uh, hadn't always been called Ernst and Ernst. They'd been known as Ernst and Winnie. But nevertheless, they consolidated with Arthur Young to now become the Ernst & Young Company. Price Waterhouse and Coopers & Libran consolidated to be Price Waterhouse Coopers. Deloitte Haskins & Sells uh, consolidated with Touche Ross to be uh, uh, Deloitte Touche, uh, now just referred to as Deloitte and Pete Marwick Mitchell became the KPMG company out of uh, the Amsterdam area of Amstelveen. Now there are also, besides the big four companies, there are also um, a mid-tier or second-tier group of accounting firms. Uh, these include uh, BDO, RSM, Grant Thornton, uh, these others. Uh, Mazers, uh, of course, is the group uh, that handles the Trump Organization that's been in the news lately. These may be smaller than the big four, but they're still quite large and they have a significant international presence. Uh, for example, they'll have thousands of employees all over the world, or at least in multiple countries. But nevertheless, they typically handle clients who are smaller than the big four. Um, after these uh, second tier, tier firms, we move into the local and regional offices. So, this is where we find that the vast majority of independent accountants or public accountants that, and we find thousands and thousands of accountants who serve local clients and can range from having a few hundred employees in a regional firm uh, with several offices, maybe in several states, to being a sole practitioner. Let's talk about how the standards are set. Uh, basically, what we're going to see is that uh, the U.S. GAAP, which is the generally accepted accounting principles, uh, are overseen and established by two main bodies in the United States. Okay, the, the Financial Accounting Foundation, which we never really hear about, oversees and sponsors the uh, Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB, and the Government Accounting Standards Board, the GASB. These are the two groups that you really hear about a lot because they're the ones who actually promulgate the, the standards that accountants must abide by. That said, uh, I would also note that the Government Accounting Standards Board does not promulgate rules and standards for the federal government, only state and local governments, as well as not-for-profit organizations, such as local hospitals, uh, charities, uh, those sorts of things. Then we come to the IFRS, the International financial reporting standards. There is an IFRS foundation uh, that uh, oversees the International Accounting Standards Board, the IASB. When the IASB promulgates the standards under IFRS, each national accounting standards board uh, that adopts IFRS must decide whether or not they are going to uh, embrace all of the uh, standards promulgated by the IFRS, or excuse me, the IASB, or if they're going to alter some or add some according to their national needs. For example, when I was in um, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Arabia uh, uh, imposes a religious tax on all Muslims called zakat. 
And so there is no IASB uh, standard for accounting for zakat and the um, the accounting standards board for Saudi Arabia had to issue a, a separate um, a standard to deal with deal uh, to deal with zakat and how that is imposed on um, uh, on the Muslims in Saudi Arabia, uh, but not on uh, non-Muslims. Let's talk about who the regulatory organizations are. Now, for the U.S., uh, generally accepted accounting standards, which is what we call GAAP, um, we have the Financial Accounting Standards Board and the, and the Government Accounting Standards Board, who we just talked about. But also, the Internal Revenue Service can uh, impose their own uh, rules on accountants and, and how um, accounting must be done. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission may also weigh in on uh, these standards. And obviously, they regulate um, the, the rules that uh, public companies must follow. After uh, the Enron debacle, we found a law that was uh, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act passed in 2002. And lo and behold, part of SOX, which is what it's called, S-O-X, they established the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. Now, the PCAOB oversees and uh, regulates or, or can impose regulations and sanctions on the public accountants that audit uh, publicly traded companies. Again, the PCAOB does not uh, govern the companies themselves, the, the publicly traded companies, but they what they do is they monitor and, uh, and uh, kind of shepherd the public accountants that audit the publicly traded companies. Big difference there. Uh, obviously, they uh, when I say publicly traded, that excludes any privately held or closely held uh, organizations such as uh, the Trump Organization, which is uh, privately held. So the PCAOB doesn't have any uh, jurisdiction over them or their accountants. Um, and then finally, we come to the state boards of public accountancy. Now, in different states, they may be called different things, but nevertheless, they govern the, uh, the accounting profession. So in Texas, we have the, uh, the Texas State Board of Public Accountancy that uh, license and uh, monitor the behaviors of uh, CPAs in the state of Texas. Uh, or those that present themselves as public accountants or hold themselves out to offer public accounting services. For the International Financial Reporting Standards, that is the IFRS, the International Accounting Standards Board uh, promulgates all the standards, the, uh, in which we've already talked about in the previous slide, and also you have uh, the Accounting Regulatory Committee, the ARC, uh, which is a, a uh, group established by the European Commission. So the European Commission provides their uh, comments and, and uh, re uh, recommendations to the ARC, who then um, passes those on to the IASB for inclusion into the um, the IFRS standards. I would also note that there are no natural laws that govern these rules, okay, these standards, whether we're talking about U.S. GAAP or IFRS. It is simply a, a matter of people getting together and establishing the rules of reporting, the rules of accounting and saying, okay, this is how we're going to do it, this is what we're going to allow, and we're not going to allow this. Since there are no natural rules, we have to have um, standards that everyone understands, and uh, by doing so, uh, we're all on the same page when we 
understand that we can't have off book uh, accounting systems and we can't have uh, well under IFRS they don't allow LIFO accounting for inventory whereas that is allowed under US GAAP. I would also point out that um, at the beginning of this century there was a <clears throat> excuse me there was an effort between the two uh, governing bodies to converge their standards and try to have one unified set of accounting standards for the whole world. We're still working on that. It, it was supposed to be done by 2005, and uh, here we are 16 years later, and it's still not done, although there has been uh, a fair amount of movement towards uh, that convergence. Um, we, we still have some ways to go. Then finally, we have these professional organizations that weigh in and govern uh, different uh, parts of the profession. The American Institute of CPAs has a tremendous voice in the accounting profession. Uh, and as part of that, each state has their own society of CPAs. Now, these are not regulatory agencies, but they are uh, tremendous uh, influencers. Uh, so we have a Texas society, we'll have a Louisiana society, and each state will have their own society of CPAs uh, to help uh, guide the profession. We have National Association of Accountants, the Government Finance Officers Association, GFOA, and we have the Institute of Management Accountants. Now, the IMA is a private organization that issues the CMA, the, the Certified Management Accountant Certificate. Uh, whereas the states issue CPA licenses, the uh, Institute of Management Accountants issues the CMA license. There are a host of other uh, types of organizations like the IMA that will uh, issue these different certificates. So uh, there's a lot to know about in the accounting profession, and um, so we will want to uh, at least appreciate how much the accountants are influenced by very, very many people.